Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Wolf. Christopher Washington, Merry Christmas. We're, uh, where are we? We're at the Merry uh, Satan, Ambassador. Miss. We're at the Ambassador Chinese restaurant right now. We're with Tony uh, Jackson. And, uh, is that your last name? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it either until a few minutes ago. But uh, we work with him at Aqua Riva, and he's a bartender, and he's also a, a painter and uh, a musician. Um, anything else? A writer when I can find the time. Writer. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, yeah, we're we're pulling out a Christmas interview here. Yeah. yeah. Um, we didn't think that we were gonna get an interview on Christmas, uh, but. We, we met all together here to get Chinese food and do this interview and hang out. Tony's been working on some interesting stuff. He showed us a, a picture of a painting that he's working on where the idea is to... What you showed me was this like widened face. Right, where you split the the photograph in half and put it over. Yeah. So it actually looked like the face was three times as wide as it should be, and uh, that was really interesting. What's your What's your take on art? In general? Yeah. Or what I'm working on? <laughs> in general. Well, how do you feel about art? <laughs> I mean, what's your, yeah, and uh, I mean. Pretty broad. Can we narrow it down? Let's we'll start from the micro and then work our way up. I don't know. What do you want to do? I mean, what is your take on art? Is it for expressing emotion? Is it for expressing intellectual ideas? Is it just fun? It can be whatever you want it to be. What is it for you? Creative way to pass the time, for the most part. Um, you just don't have anything better to do? I don't know. There's always better things to do. Netflix, there's pornography. I mean, why make anything? You think Netflix and pornography are better than art? It depends. They could be art too. <laughs> well, I enjoy them, but I don't know, you know, I don't kind of, I, I don't really take my jerking off as an artistic expression. Well, you're doing uh, it wrong. Really. <laughs> it can be high art. You're gonna have to show us how this. When you're works. done, you should get up. You should applaud. You'd be like, "That was amazing." I, I the just, best one-man performance I've ever seen. I squirt the shit into the garbage can and one. move on. You you're know, I don't. <laughs> well, I. I don't think of it as art. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's you can deep. Put food coloring in it. Really? You paint with it? You can. <laughs> I saw there was a woman who in the 60s was painting with her vagina. I think she was holding the brush. I think it was a statement uh, thing that she was doing. More like they call a, those snail tracks. Performance art, no. She's holding the brush <laughs> and doing paintings. Interesting. Uh, yeah, you, sure. Yeah, or like... Was she an artist beforehand? Did, did she... I might have dreamed that. I don't remember. <laughs> I, or I saw it on something, YouTube, or... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I was, I've always had a, a, a desire to make things that... From nothing. Yeah, me too. What kind of instruments do you play? Uh, guitar, I've been experimenting with keyboard, and, uh, yeah. Um, you've been getting some new toys to, to play with, too. Yeah, uh, talking about the vibrator, or? <laughs> if that's what you want to talk about, yes, that's what I'm talking about. How do you feel about your new vibrator, <laughs> Tony? I love it. Nancy has been wonderful to me. Nancy, he named it. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I went through a long period of not doing anything, or actually, um, when I first moved to Portland in my late 20s, I was, I was painting, and I was writing, and I was playing music, 
and I was doing each for an hour to two a day and was really happy with the things that I was doing and noticed that I didn't really have any people in my life. Of course you don't. Um, and then so I, I realized that if I was going to have people in my life, then I would need to do some of these things less or like I couldn't be making art for eight hours a day and have a job and it's still have a social life. So. so social life became more important to me and then slowly that replaced the making thing. And I just focused on writing and I, that's all I did for several years. I thought that I was I was done. I was done with painting. Um, I was done with um, making music and playing music. And, and then I didn't feel very happy in that, but not making, but not having something for expressing. I missed it. Do you find yourself in situations where you're uh, just making art? Like, do you do you like trap yourself still? For long periods of time, eight hours to, to do art? Or? Oh, I never get that much time anymore. And uh, I don't even... I'm trying to get more comfortable, or less interested in the idea of being an artist, and just more comfortable in just doing whatever I'm in the mood for. Some, some weeks it might be, I just, all I do is play guitar and write songs, and then um, there will be other ideas uh, for projects that are kind of on the back burner, so to speak, and, um, until I get to that place where it's like, all right, I really want to, to work on this. I want to, it's in my mind, I want to make this idea a thing, a tangible thing that I can hold, I can look at. And then I, I battle with uh, fear and energy and time issues. And, um, do you have uh, ambitions of being a professional artist someday? I do. I have very strong ambitions to, to make a living making things. And yeah. I, I wonder how much that still is even part of the kind of consumer capitalistic paradigm, for lack of a better phrase, to, to have to, to make things that make money. Right. But no, I struggle with that big time. Professional artists don't, I think, waste a lot of... I think that's an excuse for me to not make it. Do you guys need any more water? I'm good, thank you. You guys are all really awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Merry you. Christmas. So, I can get... I can go from sitting on the couch or lying in bed to having a large show at my own little gallery space without actually doing anything. And to, so to get up and actually just make the work and just be content in just that. I'm happy is when I'm just doing something that's expressive, that's creative. And it doesn't have to have um, purpose to it. Or an end result. Like well, it doesn't have the, to be a I don't have this doesn't have to go on a wall someplace and have other people come and see it. And to be bought. I mean the, right. there's something about the idea of of uh, having something having monetary value that <clears throat> I, I read a quote by uh, some Indian guru one time and he <clears throat> and he talked about I can't quote him because I don't have it memorized, but it has to do with you know, whenever I sit down in front of a canvas, if I'm thinking about how much money I might make for it or how much somebody might love it, I am not free to create what I really want to create on that canvas. I'm always kind of conscious of, will anybody buy it? Is it really of any value to anybody? Does it mean anything to anybody? But if I just create out of my heart and without any idea, but it's so hard to disengage, especially in our society, you know, because everything's, 
everything's value is based on how much it's worth monetarily. Yeah, but that might only be a very small percentage of professional artists who only create from their heart with no sort of concern for um, amongst and famous know. artists that only create. No. 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 Famous artists always think about how much this shit's worth. I don't think so. No? No. I, I think you're still going to make what you make. You can't say that this is the thing that it has the most value in the art community, so I'm going to, to make this. Like you can only make what you can make. You might see, I have a artist friend in Dallas, Texas who's been very successful for 20 years with several different galleries just making abstract work using acrylic on acrylic sheet, large scale, uh, just very simple compositions. I don't think he puts a lot of thought into you know, what this is going to be worth to somebody. He just makes the work. But he's, I think he has a, a smart business mind too, and he's not afraid to put it out there. He's not afraid of what someone might think of it, and therefore he hasn't had any problem. Like I think that's the biggest. Of the year. Yeah, I think that's been he's the been biggest. Sale, he's been a salesperson for his own artwork. Yeah, and that's why he's making a living. Do you feel that stands in front of you? I mean, I know it does for me. It's so hard for me to get all excited about my artwork and try to sell it to somebody because a lot of times I feel like my artwork is less than perfect. It's not. It's not up to my idea of what it should be. And it's hard for me to believe that anybody would really want to buy it. The fact is, is you know, I, does it doesn't get in your way. The first step for me is just to make the work. I make more excuses than work. It's time and energy. Do I want to sleep until an hour before I have to go to work every day? Because I've been up late, I'm just jerking off or watching Netflix. Like, can I get up earlier? Like, what? How do I make time and not excuses? And then not worry about it. Like make the work. I have several projects that I've started that are not finished. Because yeah. I, I'm always excited like a relationship. I'm always excited at the beginning of a right. project. And then it just it sits. And I I feel um, consoled when I see famous artists like Moreau and you see their studios and they're always working on several things at once. It's not like oh one painting I just see it through to the end. Like it's they're working on all kinds of stuff. And that's so that's fine. It's more of just about and ideally whether or not I, I simply just don't want to work in restaurants anymore. Me too. And that's why I daydream about making a living as an artist. And not making things that I'm going to sell at the farmer's market or down at Saturday market. Or not something you're going to buy in the store. Something that was made and is going to be unique and, and something that I get excited about. Yeah. The last couple of weeks I've been focused on trying to to make things. Like I revisited the, my friend in Dallas and looking at his work and going and, and knowing that I can paint better than him. And thinking, all right, well, if he's been successful at it and I can paint better than him, then I should be doing large scale abstract work. And then you get the studio all set up for that, and then you realize that I'm not moved by that type of work anymore. And <laughs> I want to make things that if I were that if I was to go to, to a gallery and I saw it on the wall, like I would want to fuck that piece of art. Like I'm just so turned on by it. Like that, I want to get excited. I want to like, be, oh my god, go out the door. It, you gotta, you gotta come see this. Like, get. It, that's a rare thing. Yeah. But that's the type of like work that I want to make. How do you get to that point? How how do you like? How do you make work that you're gonna be excited about and you think other people would be excited about? It's, it takes more focused effort than for me to just put down a drop box, some milk crates, plexiglass or a canvas and start throwing paint, smear it around, splatter it, and hope that 
somewhere in that process I get a composition that's like, oh, that's a solid composition. I, get, I actually have to think about what I'm going to make first. So that face, the, the, the two layers and the way I pull it out, sketching out ideas. Yeah. Trying to make something that maybe has greater 